Hello and welcome to another episode of our Brothers Creed podcast, where we talk about motivation, experiences, and exploring the world around us. We are the Thomas Brothers, and I'm Jared. And I'm Ethan. Today, we have an awesome episode for you guys and gals. We're going to be talking about the Hatfields and the McCoys feud. That's right. Um, a, a lot of you have probably heard about this. It's a, a, a very popular family feud uh, that happened in the, the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky and West Virginia. And there's so much to these stories. Um, Jared and I are going to do do the best we can to kind of go through and, and get all of the the cool and most exciting details. Yeah. Well, it's difficult because there's so much context, but there's very really a lot of interesting nuances to it as well. But we're going to try to do it in a, in a simplified way here to get kind of the gist of the story, this American legend. Uh, it's almost a tall tale at this point, you know. Um, I, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't categorize it as a tall tale but it's become this big legend that uh you know the f- famous it's like the two cities uh the two families in fair verona you know <laughs> <laughs> two feuding houses yeah all right well let's go ahead and uh get into it and uh out there also uh listen to our our new intro that we put together that's right let's do it spartans what is your profession any man who must say, I am the king, is no true king. What I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills that make me a nightmare. If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change! Let us all unite! Let us fight for a new world! A decent world! Okay, so the Hatfields and McCoy story. This one is epic, and it's the story of, I'll just gonna dive right in. It's the story of two families feuding uh, who lived along the Tug Fork uh, River um, uh, uh, on the border of West Virginia and Kentucky. So it was really just one family lived on one side. The the leader of the uh, Hatfield, his name was William Anderson uh, Hatfield, but people called him Devil Ants, uh, and he was on the West Virginia side. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if you're wondering, but Devil Ants, that's a that's a curious name. Uh, there's lots of speculation about where he got his name. They say that uh, it was during the Civil War. He was a pretty tough character. It was said that he was so strong and fierce that he could take on the devil himself. Also, others say that uh, he had a brother whose nickname is Preacher Ants. And he, he'll come up in this uh, story as well. So they said that maybe that one was a preacher and one was like the devil, so they just kind of named him. And the, named the, him. the the ants was short for Anderson. Yeah. So there's lots of funny nicknames in this in this story that we'll talk about. Um, and the other one, so he's Devil Ants was the Hatfield, and then the other guy was Randolph or Ol' Ran uh, McCoy. So they kind of called him Randall McCoy. And he was involved, uh, all those involved in the feud were descendants of Joseph Hatfield, which was Randall's father, and William McCoy, which is the father of Devil Ants. So there's a lot of family in this story. It's, there's so much family in that area, and cousins and relations and brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws and uncles. So we're going to try to simplify all that because it can get co- pretty complex when you're hearing tons of names and uh, it, it just gets so convoluted. So we're just going to try to st- keep it to just this Hatfield person or this McCoy person um, and, and and how they relate back to Randall and Devil Ants Hatfield. Devil Ants Hatfield and Randall McCoy. Those are the two names. So first of all, a little bit of background on these two guys. They both uh, joined up with the Confederacy. Now, during that time, uh, West Virginia and uh, Kentucky, they were kind of uh, on the fence about whether they were going to join the Confederacy or the Union. And uh, they actually did join uh, the Union, uh, and these two men uh, went to fight for the Confederacy because they had some major issues with the uh, the Union Army and the Union, well, basically the United States of America because of a couple things. One, and they were really against the uh, encroachment on state and local rights, uh, and also they had a big problem with the 1862 Revenue Act, which made it illegal to distill whiskey without a license. So, uh, 
Hatfield. Moonshine. Moonshiners. Uh, that feral wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Hatfields were moonshiners, and they did not like that because they didn't want to have to get a license from the government to be able to make alcohol. So they uh, joined up with the Confederate Army. Now, now McCoy, um, they were uh, in the army today. Other than they, they had uh, been in a similar uh, s- some battles, and at one point, Hatfield was like, "I'm out! I'm out! I'm done with this!" And he left and went home. And McCoy decided to stay in. Randall McCoy decided to stay in the army. He got captured, spent about two years in a uh, prisoner of war camp in Chicago, uh, and when he returned. His family was destitute. His estate was basically in ruin. Uh, he had nothing. And Hatfield, who had gone back, uh, Devil Ants, he was a successful lumberman and moonshiner, and he had been very prosperous. Uh, and he had, you know, and Randall was kind of mad and, and jealous about that. Uh, also, while Randall was in jail, uh, his brother uh, got killed. His brother actually signed up as a Union soldier, uh, and that's one of the unique things about the Civil War, especially in those areas, is that it was really brother against brother in in some cases. And uh, this, uh, you know, Randall McCoy was fighting for the the Confederacy, and his brother fought for the Union, and uh, his brother was killed by a posse of Confederates, uh, kind of local militia called the Wildcats. And guess who the leader of that militia was? Probably Hatfield. Devil Ants Hatfield. And it was said that Devil Ants killed Randall's brother. So that was kind of a little bit of the start of that spark of that uh, the feud going on here. So um, we're going to talk a little about the, their profession. So the McCoy family, the father of Randall McCoy was a, kind of a destitute man. He was known to be a lazy man. He attempted to get into the lumber industry, but he failed miserably. So Randall was really just a substance farmer which means he just farmed for his own food and then you know bartered and traded with some neighbors. Now, Devil Lance Hatfield, on the other hand, was a very industrious man, even though he was illiterate. Uh, what's interesting about this is that the History Channel did, did a miniseries on this, and um, Kevin Costner is Devil Lance, and which is funny because I love the show Yellowstone, and in the show Yellowstone, much like Devil Lance, uh, Kevin Costner's character is very influential. He's got you know people in high places. He's got he puts people into power so that he can you know judges and, and, and all the way up to the state level. And Devil Lance was that way. He knew people and he put people into power. Uh, he was very influential, even though he was illiterate. Uh, he was very uh, wise businessman, timberman, whiskey man, uh, and much more. Uh, now uh, there. Is a there was an issue uh, that that happened between Devil Lance and a, a, a pair of brothers called the Klein brothers, and the Klein brothers uh, are some two guys. One ends up, ends up being a lawyer, and one ends up being a, a police officer or a sheriff. And these this dispute causes a major issue. These guys were actually orphans, and they had inherited a bunch of of, of land. And Devil Lance uh, accused them of cutting timber on his land. And it was about $62,000 worth. And back then, apparently, everybody was just suing each other all the time. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really interesting. That It was just like, I mean, over anything, over yeah. defamation of character or whatever else. It was just like, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. Yeah. And it was just the courts were going crazy trying to keep up with all these people suing each other just because they didn't like them. Yeah, it was crazy. So he, Devil Ant sued him for about $62,000. I think it was like $3,000 in a day. Uh, and they ended up having to pay... Um, about five thousand, uh, they couldn't pay, so they gave up five thousand of their own of their acres of their land to Devil Ants, and they absolutely hated that. So these two brothers uh, were infuriated, and they moved over across the river to the McCoy side, and they were they were kind of uh, throughout this whole story, they were kind of partners with the McCoys, and just absolutely hating the Hatfields, and uh, that's where that feud started. Uh, and that's not necessarily with. The McCoys, but the Klein brothers kind of partnered with the McCoys. Now, here's where the the legendary story comes from. Now, I'd, I've described several issues where this um, feud started to simmer. You know, these guys knew each other. They one deserted from the Confederacy, one stayed and suffered in prison and all this kind of stuff. His brother died, probably killed by the other one. So there's there's some issues there already. But this is what Devil Lance had always said. Um, 
was the issue that caused the feud to start. And we don't know why he said it, probably because it was funny or because it made it seem things seem ridiculous, but it was over uh, a pig. So one day um, uh, there was a Randall. Uh, well, actually, Ants's cousin, Ants had a cousin, Devil Ants had a cousin who worked as a, uh, in the Hatfield timber uh, operation. And uh, he had a bunch of hogs and whatnot. And uh, he was uh, uh, married to a, uh, a cousin of Randall McCoy. So Randall McCoy went over to his house and he's like, whoa, what, what, well, that hog right there, its ears are clipped, which is how they kind of branded their hogs back then. That's my mark. And then Floyd was like, no, that's, you know, Anza's cousin was like, well, that's not, you know that that's not right, or that, that's mine. I, that that's mine. He's like, and then Randall accused him of stealing his hog, which was a felony at the time. So Randall charged Floyd with stealing a hog, a felony, and hand, and so the Hatfields. Uh, so it went to court, and guess who was the justice of the peace? Preacher Ants, the brother of Devil Ants. So Preacher Ants is actually a good character in this whole thing. He's actually one of the main ones that has probably prevented a lot of bloodshed in this whole thing. Uh, he seemed to be a good guy, so uh, he tried to put six Hatfield, six McCoys on the jury to try to be impartial, right? But uh, it was interesting. What happened is that it came down to two guys. There was one witness, a guy named uh, Bill Stanton. Uh, he was Randall McCoy's nephew, and he's also had two. He was also the brother to two sisters that married uh, McCoys. One of those sister, one of his sisters, was the wife of Floyd McCoy who uh, Randall was accusing of stealing his hog. So he was like really caught between the middle. He was a McCoy, but his sister was married to the guy who was being accused of stealing the hog. And so he's, he basically testified, oh yeah, I saw him brand that, and that's definitely his hog. The McCoys did not like that at all. And so they uh, basically kind of went after him. Uh, they... Uh, so he's one. I'll, I'll talk about how they went after him later. Um, but there was another one, one of the jurors. Uh, so it was a six to six split. So one of the uh, jurors, uh, the McCoy jurors, actually flipped uh, and voted for uh, to not charge uh, the hog as being stolen. So he sided with the Hatfield side that the pig was actually his and not Randall's. And he worked for the Hatfield timber operation. So they were always like, well, you chose a paycheck over family, you know? So there was this, you know, this big, you know, clashing of, uh, of pride at that point. And, you know, Bill Stanton, the guy who witnessed uh, that he had seen uh, his brother-in-law tag that hog with his own tag. Uh, he was chased down by, get this guy's name, squirrel hunting Sam McCoy. <laughs> That's the kid's nickname. So he must have really loved squirrel hunting, and uh, so that that guy and his brother Paris, so just some of the McCoy boys, uh, had a confrontation with Bill in the woods. They ended up killing him, and uh, they for being kind of a traitor to uh, you know the McCoys and the Hatfields. I felt that it was murder, and they uh, couldn't prove anything in court though, because the only people that were out in the middle of the woods were those two brothers and the guy that died, and. Dead men tell no tales. So uh, that was uh, another one of the kind of things that started to boil here. Now here's the real one of the real kickers here. So this is kind of a Romeo and Juliet story. You got Devil Ants. He's got a 21 year old daughter named Rosanna, beautiful eyes and brown hair. And then you got 18 uh, year old son of Ants Hatfield, John C. Hatfield, who is a dashing young man, ladies man, uh, and they meet. You know, probably doing some of the moonshine stuff because there was a little bit of mixing uh, with the Hatfields and McCoys in that business. And uh, there was a big party on Election Day. There's always big parties on Election Day. And apparently they went off into the woods to just, uh, you know, just to talk. Hold hands. Just to talk. And uh, they came back and everybody was gone. So uh, uh, Rosanna was, um, uh, or John C. was like, hey, come back to my house. Come back to my homestead. And uh, so Rosanna went back with him because she didn't want to cross the river late you know, a night and they stayed with Ants Hatfield. He, he allowed it. He heard to stay there for a few days. And, uh, Randall <laughs> McCoy did not like that, that his daughter was over at Ants, his house with his son. Uh, so 
Randall and Ants didn't want either of them two to get married because, you know, it would be mixing blood, which was kind of ridiculous because there was plenty of cross uh, marriages between the two. Yeah, but there's bad blood in there. Anyway. Yeah, there. Yeah, and so uh, what happened is interesting. John C was kind of a ladies' man, uh, and he was uh, it, he actually got. Rosanna pregnant she actually later lost the baby to due to measles when she had it but he kind of left her uh, and but b- before he left her there was like this weird story of how how they had some kind of midnight rendezvous and then some of Rosanna's brothers Randall's kids uh, captured um, uh, John C and they said we're gonna you know capture you or whatever and Rosanna runs over to the nearest Hatfield house and Ansel just happens to be there Devil Ants happens to be there, and she's like, "Oh, they've captured John C." And he's like, "My son." And so he goes out and ca- and goes out and runs and finds the, the the McCoy boys, and you know he doesn't do anything to them, but he you know obviously embarrasses gets his, them. Gets his son back. Yeah, and uh, what's interesting is this John C. guy ends up dumping Rosanna, and then he goes after another McCoy named Nancy, who just so happened to be the son, or excuse me, the daughter of Randall McCoy's brother, who was killed by. Devil Ants Hatfield. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of interesting relations here. And uh, and uh, <laughs> that kind of a love story was kind of bizarre. I don't know if I'd call it love, but... Well, yeah, lust story. <laughs> and so they, Jauncey actually did marry at Nancy McCoy. So uh, the son of... Jauncey was the son of Hatfield, married a McCoy. Uh, even, But it wasn't Randall's uh, direct daughter um so here's kind of where this thing starts to really boil this was the election day of 1882 and this is where things seriously go down uh so there was they have on election day they have big parties and stuff like that and they were having a big shindig and this one guy tolbert mccoy uh he had he was one of eight sons of randall so one of randall's boys one of the ones that got embarrassed because he tried to capture john c you know that the romeo lover uh he was, uh, they were all at the party together. And these guys were drinking moonshine crazy, you know, having a party. Uh, and he got in a fight with a guy, um, a Hatfield. Uh, and he said, you know, you owe me money for that fiddle that I made you. And Hatfield was like, no, I don't. I already paid you. And they start fighting, fist fighting. And then Preacher Ants, uh, you know, uh, Devil Ants' brother comes in. And he's like, break it up, break it up. He's a justice of the peace, you know. So he's break it up, break it up. Stop fighting. And so... You know, they, you know, kind of break it out. The fight's over, but um, Tolbert, uh, had, M- Randall's son, Tolbert McCoy, he's still real hot and heavy. And uh, he, you know, is kind of huffing and puffing. And, and one of uh, uh, Devil Ants' younger, Devil Ants's younger brother, uh, who was there, named Ellison Hatfield, he was drinking too, and he woke up kind of when all this commotion happened. He's like, what's going on? And he hears Tolbert McCoy yell, I'm hell on earth. And then <laughs> Ellison Hatfield yells, you're a damn shit hog. <laughs> so those are fighting words in Kentucky. So basically what happened is that these two uh, guys, uh, the brother of Devil Lance Hatfield and the son of Randall McCoy got in this fight. And, and Tolbert started to lose the fight. So what he did is he pulled out a knife and he stabbed uh, Ellison multiple times in the abdomen. And then Tolbert's brother, Bud, came, ran in with a knife as well. And he started, um, you know, stabbing him. And then Ellison uh, Hatfield pulled up a rock to try to defend himself. And then a third brother, Farmer McCoy, shot Ellison in the back and he fell to the ground. And so the three McCoy brothers ran to the woods. Uh, devil preacher ants who was there uh, had broken up the fight 10 minutes earlier he says go get them and so they go and they get the boys uh and now it's a big issue you know they're like well, where do we try these boys the nearest town is uh pikeville and that's hatfield territory so these mccoy boys are going to be dead for sure you know now ellison uh was very respected mem- a very respected member of the community and so people were really pissed that he got stabbed and basically shot almost to death, but he wasn't dead yet. So Devil Ants, who wasn't there, he later came and said, if Ellis, and this is a kind of a long story, and I'm simplifying this, but basically what he said is that if 
Ellison dies, uh, or if Ellison lives, then I'll deliver those boys back over to the McCoy side to be tried for attempted murder. But if Ellison dies, we'll see what happens. You don't have to say anything else. Yeah, justice will happen. And so two days later, you know, Ellison died. And so what ha- what ended up happening, and this is a very, very abridged version of what happened, but uh, Devil Lance and his Hatfield boys took those three McCoy boys out, uh, strung them up against the bushes, and shot them multiple, multiple times. In fact, one of the youngest ones, Bud, uh, he was only 18 years old, and he got, I mean, they blasted these dudes. And those are all sons of of uh, McCoy, Randall, Randall McCoy. McCoy. Yeah, I think w- at least... Uh, Two were sons. Oh, Tolbert was a son. Bud was a son. And I think then one the was other one, brother Farmer, or something like Farmer that. was a, I don't know if he, uh, if he was a son of Randall or not, but he was McCoy. And so uh, that was a big, a big deal. And, and in that, a preacher ants was trying to, you know, make peace. And, and, and there was, you know, the mothers of the McCoy boys were pleading for mercy and Devil Ants was not having it. And he said, you know, and kind of at the time after this happened, they were like, well, you know, that was justice. That was what happens. And that's where, that's where you're going to pick up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Devil Lance McCoy, he ended up, or Devil Lance Hatfield, he ended up getting uh, 20 men, most hat, most Hatfields. Um, and they basically performed the execution of, uh, of those McCoy boys. And so this really kind of, shook this whole uh the tug valley is where where this all happened and, and it really kind of stunned the the people that lived there just the uh the 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 sheer amount of violence that had happened and killings that had happened over the past couple of years and so uh the this execution of these three these three boys three guys it, it kind of satiated the bloodlust a little bit for a couple of years between the 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 Hatfields and the McCoys. They kind of went their own ways, and they kind of ended up, um, you know, just uh, I wouldn't say there was peace, but there wasn't any more bloodshed for a little while. Um, and really, the the, the people they uh, with the guy the the Hatfield that died, he was popular in the community, and so the people kind of felt that okay, well, Devil Ants. Got his uh got his justice according to the people and that the you know the Randall McCoy he didn't like that at all and he was like no you know they don't they they didn't get justice you know they got murdered and executed and everything else and because uh, he felt that the Devil Ants just just took the law into his own hands which and, he did which he did but because he was scared that if he delivered him over to the McCoy side nothing they would happen. nothing they, would happen because it would be all family on the jury they would just get got off yeah. yeah. And so uh, Randall McCoy ended up going to the uh, grand jury and named all 20 of the men that were there, including Devil Lance, as uh, murderers. And um, basically the, the, the court said, uh, yeah, okay, well, we understand that something bad happened, but you know, nobody was really, nobody was, they went to the, the Kentucky side, which is the McCoy side, and nobody in Kentucky was willing to go over to the Hatfield side in West Virginia across the river and get them serve and, these warrants, yeah, they serve the die. warrants, and, and and bring them back, you know. And so they were just like, eh, let's let's just leave it. <laughs> and so tensions really started to rise over the next couple of years because McCoy felt like Randall felt like his sons were just murdered. Oh yeah, and he for sure. And no justice was delivered, even when he tried to go through the justice system. Yeah, and he was super sour too, just because I mean, all the stuff previously happened. You know, forget it. Not not, not forget about these murders, or, or not the the three kids that just died. But or not, they weren't all kids. But I mean, they had killed somebody. So in that time period, capital punishment was, you know, it was what it was. Um, and all the stuff that had happened previously with McCoy, he was just festering from everything else from knocking all, up his John, yeah. John C. Hatfield, knocking up his daughter and then all the <laughs> way back from the war, you know, there's pigs yeah. and daughters and, and, and lum- brothers and dying and brothers and, 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 uh, and lumber and lawsuits and all this different kind of stuff that was just going crazy. And so these, um, these Klein brothers, they ended up, uh, hooking up with the McCoys and uh, they was no relation there, but they really ended up um, kind of getting in, getting in bed together, and they were just they were against the Hatfields a hundred percent. 
and uh, Klein was was super upset because uh, he had to give uh, Devil Lance Hatfield all this this land and stuff, and and McCoy was upset because of the the, the, the all the other stuff we just talked about, and so it really started to uh, uh, tension started to to boil. So uh, it, it it was interesting because the. As the years passed, the Hatfields, they really felt like the McCoys had the drop on them for some reason. They were just like, man, we, you know, they know everything about us. They know what we're doing. They know where we're going to be at. They know everything. And they just didn't know how. They, they were like, we got we got, a, we got a spy in the ranks. We got a mole, right? So they were investigating and trying to figure out who it was. Well, all the suspicions kind of pointed at one person. And this was Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> Nancy McCoy. John C.'s husband. John, C's, John C. Hatfield, one of the sons of Devil Ants Hatfield. Her, his wife, they were suspecting that, uh, that John C. was telling Nancy um, uh, all the family secrets. All the family secrets and telling her whatever. And that she was just turning right back around and going and telling um, her uncle, who, who at the time was. Uh, uh, Randall McCoy. Was Randall McCoy. Yeah. And so that's how they were getting all their information. So um, so then something happened, right? <laughs> uh, so they suspected Nancy and kind of the Hatfield family. where They were all kind of upset about it and stuff. So um, Devil Hatfield, Devil Lance's oldest son, Cap, I think it was his oldest son, Cap Hatfield decided that he needed to go teach Nancy a lesson. Oh, <laughs> right, so he goes over to to John C, his brother's house, and his Nancy McCoy, who's his sister-in-law, sister-in-law yeah. goes over to her house, breaks into the house, who's his sister-in-law. His brother isn't there; it's just his sister-in-law and her daughter. Um, which I'm not sure if it's if it, I'm pretty sure it was it was John C's John C's daughter, daughter too. Yeah. But yeah. broke into the cabin and uh, beat her with a cow tail. <laughs> Oh man, that's the worst kind of lashing. Yeah, it's the worst kind of lashing. Like, what should we bring to beat her with? A cow tail. Yeah. So, <laughs> beat her and not, not the candy. I assume. Yeah, not the candy. Not not, not the caramel ropes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he beat her with a cow tail and and her daughter do- and her teenage daughter. <laughs> and so, uh, obviously, word got out of this, and Jeff McCoy, who was Nancy's brother. He got super pissed, and he was like, "Why well, you, you know, you, you beat up my sister with the <laughs> cow tail, right?" And so he gets one of his buddies, and he rides across the river and goes to Cap Hatfield's house, and he's gonna get payback on Cap for whooping his sister, right? And so he's beating on the house and beating on the house, and uh, um, the Cap isn't there. Cap Hatfield is not there, but. One of his friends is there, and uh, his wife is there in the the cabin. And supposedly this cabin was like, it was a log cabin that was pretty fortified. Um, But they got super, well, they ended up capturing the the one, his Cap's friend who was at the house, who he was also there whenever Cap uh, uh, beat his sister with the cow tail. Yeah. Uh, Cap Hatfield's friend was there, Uh too. And so they said you were there, you know. And so they citizens arrested him, and they put him over. His, they put him on his horse, and they tied his hands or whatever, and they were taking him away, taking him back across the river so that he could be tried or whatever. Well, on the way, he sees an opening, and he jumps off his horse, runs into the woods, and makes his way back to Cap's house. And so these guys, they turn around, and the, the Jeff McCoy and one of the other guys, they turn around, and they go back to Cap's house, and they're like, we know you're in there, we know you're in there. And um, they end up shooting the house up, like pretty bad, shooting it up pretty bad. Nobody got hurt, but Cap's friend, and, who had escaped them, and his wife were both in the house. Yeah. So the McCoys, they leave, and then um, Cap comes back eventually comes back sees his house is all shot up his wife is shaken his friend is you know almost got taken away yeah and he's like what happened and they said oh this these McCoy guys they came and they tried to they tried to get us or and he got super mad and he was like all right so he, they they hopped on their horses and they chased out chased him out uh 
and they caught up to him whenever these uh, Jeff McCoy, Nancy's brother, was passing back over the river. And he, or he was about to pass over the river. And they said, hey, you know, stop, stop. You shot up my house, all that kind of stuff. And he didn't want to stop because he knew that he was going to be in trouble. And so he just j- ditched his horse, bailed it into the river, and swam across the river. <laughs> and so Cap Hatfield and his friend, they just started <laughs> shooting in the water and across stuff the river. across the river. And as he as uh, John McCoy was getting out of the water on the other side of the river, he caught a bullet. And he died. Oh, man. And so they're like, oh. I wonder how wide that river is. I don't know. Um, so they were like, oh, man, we done messed up. Well, actually, they probably didn't say anything. They were probably just like, oh, whatever. But, yeah. uh, but Devil Lance was like, you guys done messed up. He was just like, we don't need this. He started the yeah, fire he, he again. He's just like he's like we don't need this. It's been it's been relatively fine for the past little while, but now you just we're just it's all starting back up. So Devil Lance actually sent an apology letter, um, and and was just kind of like you know this is what happened. This is uh, I, I heard that he sent it to the Klein brother. Yeah, he didn't want to send it to Randall. He didn't want to send it to Randall because number one he felt that the Klein brother was, was just, was in charge and that Randall was just kind of doing whatever the Klein brother said. Yeah. And so he sent it to the Klein brother and said, you know, we're so, we're, 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 we're sorry that this happened or whatever else. And, you know, let's not take this further. And, and so it, it just kind of fell on deaf ears. I'm sure Randall didn't like that. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it kind of fell on deaf ears, whether it was sincere or not. I mean, maybe it was, I don't know. And, And the interesting thing is too, is that, you know, I don't know who's right here. The Hadfields and McCoys, I'm not going to make that decision. I, maybe I have my own personal ideas, but I wasn't there, yeah. you know, and yeah. I, I've, I've only seen the History Channel thing and the research that I've done, you know, for yeah, this. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, well, you know, which one was the good guys and which ones were the bad guys? I don't know if you could really make that de- de- Well, I feel like Devil Ant's decision was merciful in some cases. You know, like, you know, he let uh, John C. go, uh, uh I think I, I think or one he, thing. Well, he let the guys go who had captured John C. Yeah, uh, and then, one, I, th- I think one thing is too is that they said that um, uh, Randall McCoy was just a very bitter and prideful man, and that he was just. I think he suffered with a lot of depression and different things like that, um, and, and maybe that's just a result of the war and the prisoner of war camp, Confederate prisoner of war camp that he was in, and whatever else. Um, and so I, I think that just kind of fueled, fueled a lot of the, the other stuff. So, um, so Devil Lance at this time, he started actually losing some influence in the Valley. Um, and, and he, he lost a couple of, uh, land disputes that were kind of in, in the area there. Um, but he was still very influential in, in getting some of these people voted that he wanted to get into, to, to politics, um, and to be elected it, to the point to where he would actually even, um, he would hire posses to go to like the election booths and basically at gunpoint force force people to vote for certain <laughs> for certain maybe things. He is, maybe he is the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you know, all you gotta do is just wait until midnight, and then you just take a take a bunch all of about, three no, two o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and just drop off a bunch of mail in ballots. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> Wagon loads of wet mail in ballots. It's easy. That's like winning an election. Yeah. And so. Um, the the McCoys who were in Kentucky at the time they actually uh, petitioned um, the governor of Kentucky to take action against the Hatfields, and he listened. He listened to their story and was like, "Oh yeah, you know, let's we'll take action to get them." So he actually issued warrants for all of the men that executed Randall McCoy's three sons um, or two sons and whoever else it was, the three McCoys, um, and offered rewards for all of the Hatfields in West Virginia, so in a different state. And so, um, it, however, Devil Lance on the uh, West Virginia side, he had powerful people in the governor's office on his side, and so th- they they actually convinced the West Virginia governor to... But you mean the Kentucky governor? Uh, no, Devil Lance, the Hatfield, was on the, the West Virginia side. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the Kentucky side was the one that had all the warrants out. yes. Yeah, and so so Hatfield used his power to convince the West Virginia governor to just delay all of the warrants, the McCoy warrants, let's call them from uh, yeah. 
from Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. And he was just delaying them, delaying them, delaying them. And because of the delay, the Kentucky couldn't send lawmen into West Virginia to get the the Hatfields because there the, these warrants were delayed yeah. in the government. Well, the McCoys didn't like this. They got impatient, and so they sent kind of the the muscle, right? And this there was this guy named Bad Frank Phillips, <laughs> and uh, he was kind of the muscle for the for the McCoys. And so they just kind of sent him. They actually deputized him, and they sent him just just because. And uh, even before these warrants were were legal, and he was not a good guy, um, and so he went over and, and and did a bunch of different stuff. He actually captured, uh, he captured one person who was actually a McCoy, but he had kind of defected to the Hatfield side, <laughs> and so and they were like, "Dude, you, you didn't you didn't do what we asked you to do." Um, so. Going back again, um, Devalance he tried to uh, broker some sort of peace deal with them. You know, first he tried to apologize, and then after that he actually with issued the, with the letter or with, with, the second with, time with the letter with okay, the letter, yeah. and then after that he actually issued them a, a threat. He threatened them and said, "You know, stop doing these warrants, stop doing this, or you guys are going to regret it." Threatened them, and they still kept coming, and then. After that, he actually tried to to bribe them. He offered um, one of the Kleins uh, six thousand dollars to uh, well six thousand dollars today's money, which was like three hundred eighty dollars in their day's money. Yeah, he offered him six thousand dollars just to just stop. Yeah, right. Stop pushing Randall McCoy and stop feeding the fire. Stop fanning the fire. And the Klein, the lawyer Klein brother, he took this. He took the money. Oh, really? He took the money and said, "Okay." And so he took the money, but the wheels had were already turning with the Kentucky governor, and they couldn't be stopped. He was just the governor was just like, "No, nah, I'm going to keep going with this. I'm already this deep into it." Oh, jeez. And so <clears throat> it didn't work, right? <laughs> so uh, they kept coming. This uh, bad Frank Phillips kept coming, and 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 kind of attacking these these uh, hat fields and stuff. And so, unfortunately, uh, the sons of of uh, Hatfield, uh, of, of Devil Ants, decided to go right to the source, right? So Cap and a couple of the other sons, Hatfield sons, they did, uh, they decided to raid Randall McCoy's farm. And they decided to raid his home. Oh, geez. Yeah. So they get there, and a couple of them go around the back to watch the back door. A couple of them go in front, and they say, "You know, everybody, come out of the house, right? We're gonna we're gonna take you in for for disturbing the peace or whatever." And inside the house was uh, Randall McCoy, uh, Caleb McCoy, who which his twenty two year old son, and then one of his daughters, like a twenty one year old daughter. And then his wife, Roseanne. Uh, uh, this is, this is years later. So yes, years later. later. Um, and so they didn't come out. Uh, so they started. I don't know who shot first. Somebody shot first, and then um, the the twenty two year old McCoy boy. He went up to the uh, uh, to the upstairs and ended up shooting out the window and hitting. I think one of the uh, maybe he hit Cap or something in the shoulder, and and they were shooting at each other and everything. And, um, well, Cap ended up, uh, there was a big, uh, cotton, uh, pile basically. And so he ended up getting a whole thing of cotton, lit it on fire and threw it in, in, into the house. So the house catches on fire. And so the house is on fire and the, the, the women inside are trying to put out the fire with all the water they had inside. People are shooting all this kind of stuff. The windows are breaking out and bullets are flying everywhere. Well, they used all the water inside the house to to get uh to put the fire out but it was still going and so they had to go out to the to the water trough outside to get some more water well the the 21 year old daughter of Randall McCoy runs outside with a bucket to get more water and um one of the the sons of Hatfield I think it was Cap kind of stops her and um he he tells one of the other one of the younger sons of uh, Hatfield of uh, of uh, Devil Lance, whose name is uh, Elsie, I think. 
Yeah. His name's Elsie, and he goes by Cotton Top. That was his nickname. Kind of like Squirrel Hunter or whatever it was, <laughs> right? Squirrel so his, name's, his name's uh, Cotton Top, and they... Cotton Top was kind of... Uh, he had a lot of mental issues. Uh, they think he was slightly autistic, and so he never really fit in, and so he did anything that... Uh, anything that, that his brothers told him to. It's just He was just basically... I mean, they told him to do something, he'd do it, no matter what. And so... Uh, one of the older brothers said, shoot her, cotton top, shoot her. And he shot her, right? So he shot her. And then uh, Randall McCoy's wife, she runs out, and because her daughter just got shot, she runs out and she gets uh, hit with uh, uh, the stock of a, a rifle a couple times, which breaks her skull and they break her arm and her hip. As she like falls to the ground or whatever Jeez. else. Right. And so um, Randall's son, the 21 year old son who had been shooting back, he runs across the yard to go to the barn or something like that. And he gets shot on his way to the barn. And Randall somehow sneaks out the back door and runs into the woods. Right. So they call this the, uh, the New Year's Massacre. Oh, gosh. Because it was on New Year's Day or it was New Year's Eve night. Wow. So they call this a New Year's ma- massacre, and um, it it blew up as far as like um, just reporters took this, and it was all over the newspapers, and just I mean it was, I mean almost nationwide, right? Everywhere was talking about the the New Year's massacre and everything else, and so you can just see this. I mean, it just goes from bad to worse. Well, yeah, I mean, like the last fight where someone died. I mean, well, they shot across the river. I shot him across the river. That was kind of in cold blood. But, I mean, that fight at the election day party was just mm-hmm. kind of a drunken fight that turned south. This is like an, an assault, an attack, and a, and a mass murder. Yeah. So so the, the, the muscle of the McCoys, obviously, with the McCoys were super upset at this because they're their leader and family were, were, were literally killed and beaten at this time. And so... Uh, Bad Frank gathered a, a whole um, a group of men, and they wanted to do a counter raid. Uh, and so they they got all together, and they crossed the river, and they went into to Hatfield Country, and they came across Cap Hatfield with a guy named Jim Vance and his wife, who were uh, on a walk. They were just kind of like out, you know, on a walk or whatever. And they saw him coming, and they saw him there, and they started shooting at each other, and. Um, Jim Vance, who was one of the, uh, um, I think he was a brother-in-law. To yeah, he was, yeah. And Devil Ants. Yeah, he was, you know, uh, family. Um, he ends up getting shot in the stomach and Cap and, and one the lady that was with him, uh, they ended up getting away. But then, uh, Frank Phillips, bad Frank, he ends up going over and, and instead of taking Jim Vance in for whatever he did, I don't know what he did didn't you know he uh he just executes him shoots him in the head right there on the path and so the the governor basically the governor of Kentucky came out and said okay all right everybody's even <laughs> this just needs to stop <laughs> right well and they actually you know that bad friend guy he had been deputized but they actually ripped that away from him and they were like no dude you can't you, know, you can't do this stuff in the name of the law and just go and just do your own bidding and so he's um, a judge. <laughs> yeah, Judge Dredd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, judge, jury, and executioner. So he actually, uh, unsanctioned, he kept doing raids against the Hatfields. And he would try to, I mean, there's still warrants on a lot of these Hatfields. So he tries to go out there and does raids on them, tries to capture them. And if he can't capture them, kill them. And he kept, he catches a couple of them and stuff and tries to take them back. But uh, the thing is, is that he's doing this all like in the name of the McCoys. Right. But he's not a McCoy. And I think his whole group of like 20 men or whatever that was with him, maybe, maybe a little bit less. There's only one like distant relative of the McCoys and the rest of them were bounty hunters. Hmm. So they weren't even like this. It was hired help. Yeah. It wasn't even about, it wasn't at this point. It was just, I mean, it's just, I don't know. Some people that were just trying to get money. Yeah. Lust hungry or, you know, blood hungry. So, um, there ended up being a uh, 
in one of these raids, Bad Frank uh, was attacking the Hatfields, and there was a, a, a deputy that was not on either side. He was just like a keeper of the peace. He ended up, uh, Bad Frank ended up just executing him, basically. Um, and he got shot, the, the deputy got shot a couple times, and he was like, you know, I'm not a Hatfield, I'm not a Hatfield. And, and Frank was like, I don't care, you know. Jeez. And so he was kind of... Um, all over that. And so at, at this point, it's national news, right? It's it, it, And one other thing I thought was interesting is that this wasn't the only family feud. There was like a bunch of other family feuds that were going on between different families all over this area. <laughs> they were, <laughs> yeah, it was not... And, and, and I was listening to one thing and it was talking about it was between the, I don't know, the, the French family and the Smith family and this other family and that other family and this family and that family. Like it was just... Well, when you have... When these people literally have like thirteen kids each, yeah, I mean, there's and so much family around there that basically the entire community is your family. So you almost have it's almost like a state versus yeah. a state, like it, like yeah, like an entire. And you got you know that many kids, and then their kids have kids, and that many kids, and it's easy to grow a, a, oh, yeah. a mass hundreds of people that are you know loyal to the family or whatever. So the the governor of Kentucky. He heard about this massacre at the McCoy farm um, that Randall had lost five children at this point to the feud. Um, You know, two at the massacre night, his daughter and his son. Three, uh, uh, you know, potentially one before and and two or three. Tolbert before. Yeah, two or three at the uh, the hands of uh, DeValance for the execution. And uh, his wife was permanently injured. Um, and the, the, the governor of Kentucky, he was getting fed all this from the McCoys and he was like, man, this devil Lance Hatfield guy, he's a bad dude. He needs to go. And so, um, he, he, you know, issued warrants again to everybody, all the Hatfields, all these Hatfields. Well, the governor of West Virginia, he heard a similar, but opposite story. And his, the stories were that the McCoys were this terrible family that started this feud by killing this guy and then stealing this person and attacking this guy and all this other kind of stuff. And the Hatfields are just being in self-defense. So the governor of West Virginia issues a bunch of warrants for the McCoys in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, what? And, and uh, so... Um, at this point, everything just kind of goes. Everything just kind of goes to crap. So ants end up. Uh, Devil ants ends up losing a lot of his uh, uh, kind of his his his, his power and authority. Um, a lot of these uh, big wig investors that had lots of money coming in from Philadelphia, and New York, and stuff like that um, were putting pressure on people that owned lots of land. And Devil ants owned lots of land. Well, they started suing and all sorts kind of stuff and. Uh, Devil Ants lost every lawsuit that came across because he didn't have people that were, they called it, and previously they had people in the courthouse that would just rubber stamp, you know, oh, Devil Ants, Devil Ants, Devil Ants, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. gets whatever. But things were changing so much in the government that he didn't have that anymore. And so he was losing stuff left and right. and Just and, like in Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And, and it got to a point to where uh, he owed a lot of people money. Mm-hmm. And he owed so much money that um, he had to pay it immediately. Uh, that he was forced to liquidate a, most of his assets, and uh, one of those assets was actually that land that the Klein brothers ended up having to give him after mm-hmm. their dispute at the very beginning. The mm-hmm. Klein brothers ended up getting that land back. And they kind of rubbed his face in it, and they, you know, they were like, "Oh, yeah, we love that. We got our, you know, land back and stuff." Yeah. And, um, you know, I had heard that I had also read that he had, Dev Lance had given that land, that five thousand acres, to or a piece of it to John C. and Nancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they got it back from them. So it gets and it gets even worse. So, uh, so John C. Speaking about John C. His wife Nancy McCoy, uh-huh. right? She ends up getting tired of John C. And she leaves him. Well, who do you think she leaves him for? Bad Frank Phillips. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's who's the who's the McCoy uh right hand or you know, strong, strong man. man. Yeah. <laughs> really. And it's just like, man, it's so intertwined. <laughs> um so uh the governor 
actually sends warrants. The governor of West Virginia sends warrants to Kentucky for Bad Frank because he murdered that deputy and a couple other people. Mm-hmm. Um, West Virginia put bounties on all of the uh, McCoys and, and, and vice versa. So it's interesting because the West Virginia put bounties on the McCoys. Kentucky put bounties on the Hatfields. And then the Pinkertons, which was a federal agency... They were tracking down everybody. They didn't care who they were. They were just indifferently getting, you know, ki- you know, trying to capture everybody. And so it would. It, it was an interesting time. <laughs> so this all this kind of accumulates to uh, a point, and th- there's some other stuff that happened that that uh, is is pertinent to the story, but um, there's just kind of details that too much to talk about. But eventually, um, uh, Cotton Top Hatfield, he gets captured um and he's the one who who was said to have be, be sort pulled the trigger on yeah. Randall's son and daughter he was just the kind just of just aut- yeah, just, one just daughter orders. yeah he meant some so some sort of mental illness he's the one that they told to pull the trigger well um in, in uh 1889 uh, this was seven years after the uh execution of the three McCoy boys by devil Lance mm-hmm. um they had this big trial, and it was there was some Hatfield, uh, there were some Hatfields, and, and different things, and and I think one of uh, Hatfield's older brothers was on trial, and and there was just a whole bunch of stuff going through, but uh, it was decided that uh, Cotton Top Hatfield was to be hanged, right, a public execution, and. Um, it, it, they, I think it was the judge, or maybe actually it was maybe one of the Klein brothers, or somebody said, "Well, at least somebody's got to die for this, right?" And it was just, was he the one that should die for it? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was actually the first public execution that had been done in uh, a lo- uh, quite a long time, and it was, I think, the last. Actually, I think it was the last public execution in the United States. Uh, that was performed. Wait, what do you mean, like, like hanging, hang, like public ha- hanging, public public hanging? Well, that was in late eighteen. This is eighteen. I think this was actually this was like eighteen nineties. Interesting, because I know they did that in Utah. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe it was just maybe they had stopped by that time. Yeah, and so uh, he was hanged, and 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 there was all kinds of press. I think that the Klein brothers had actually uh, to make the the McCor- or the Hatfields even, you know more seem more dangerous and villainous and everything else he had planted the reputation he had planted in all the newspapers that that devil Lance hatfield was going to come riding in with a posse of a hundred hatfields and that they were going to save cotton top hatfield from being hanged and they were going to break him out of prison and so they were all ready for this everyone thought the hatfields were going to come and just kill everybody and save their kin and and everything else well it never happened hmm. um so i think in the end, I think it was a total of was it fifteen people died like on that, yeah. on both sides. both sides combined. So fifteen people combined died on both sides. I'm sure that it it probably affected more people than that. Um, but just a crazy, crazy story. Yeah, what one interesting piece here at the end that I had read was that uh, Randall McCoy he died uh, late 1800s. Uh, due to, I think he got sick and then died. A very bitter man. Uh, but Devil Lance, he died probably like 10 years after Randall. In 1912, I believe it was. I actually looked up to see if I was related to either of them. Uh, and what's interesting is, uh, is that if I go through, I think, if I go through Dad, and you go all the way back to like the 1600s, and you come back forward in time, we're related to the McCoys. And then if you go on, hmm. my, on mom's side and you go all the way back to like the 1600s and then you come back in time, forward in time, we're related to the McCoys. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny. But um, anyway, Devil Lance, at the end of his life, he got baptized as a Christian and he really you know saw that as like, uh, and the preacher that baptized him was like made kind of a big deal of it. He's like, I baptized the devil himself, you know, and this kind of a thing. And, uh, you know, you know, if any man ever needed salvation, it was devil ants. And, uh, you know, the guy it kind of changed his life and well, devil ants, I guess. And he tried to make peace at the end of his life with what he had done and tried to just move on. And so 
I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, definitely. Crazy story. You know, I think there's, like you said at the beginning, it kind of turns into a legend, right? It's almost like the tale of Jesse James. It's like how much of it is true, how much of it is fluff, and how much of it is, is uh, you know, the the media or the reporters and well, it was a very sensational fl- story fluffing it up and, and it like just, it, and then the media at the time they were like oh it's all because of a pig you know all these people dying yeah. just because of a pig you know yeah. when they didn't have they didn't have social media they didn't have tv <laughs> they didn't have whatever a lot of times the newspaper was their entertainment it was well, it was what they were getting their news from and what's going on here the gossip and that, the election yes, gossip, yeah. and gossip. Well, I, I think that uh we've talked about this before like anger and resentment and I, I, you shared a quote once that uh, I really loved, and it was, "If you're, if you're trying to get revenge, uh, you might as well dig two graves: one yeah. for you, one for the person you're going after." Uh, and so, really, that's kind of what happened with these two men: is just that anger and just festering. I, I feel like Devil Ants and. and he was at least trying to stop it at some point. And I mean, he's got all these crazy kids and cousins and all this kind of stuff that are doing stupid stuff. But I feel like he was trying to stop it. And McCoy, I feel like just wanted to be left alone, but uh wild story, crazy how, how anger and pride and, and just like these tribalism can just go so far. Yeah. I, I think it's an interesting story of, uh, interesting story of loyalty, right? Yeah. Because, uh, it's kind of the you know blood is thicker type thing, which I think is good. You know, uh, familia is todo, right? Yeah, exactly. Family is everything. Um, and but at the same point, it's like you know, there's some people out there that are just crazy. And I think some of the people in this story, they just they just wanted they just wanted to be I don't know, they wanted to hurt people. Yeah, and uh, they were just they just weren't good people. Uh, I don't think everyone w- was that. Um, but I like what you said about, uh, just kind of pride and anger and, uh, resentment and hurt. Uh, whenever people get hurt, they do, uh, they do seemingly very stupid things, uh, whether that's your your pride or even, you know, physically hurt or whatever else. And so, but imagine the hurt of having your kids killed, you know, Randall, I can't, can't. Randall had five of his kids killed, you know, I imagine how bitter and angry you'd be if. Oh, five of your, I think he had 13 kids, five of your kids died at the hands of this other family. I mean, yeah. I wonder, I wonder how different it would have been if, uh, when, when, uh, Randall McCoy came back to the area and, in uh, uh, Hatfield, Devil Ants had this, you know, he had, I don't know, money and prestige and the logging company and all that sort of kind of stuff. If they would have maybe partnered together and, and Devil Ants would have, Put him under his wing, and he maybe I think was, maybe, I think maybe if Randall would have been humble enough yeah. to say, "Hey, you know, let's let's work together. Can you help me out or whatever else?" Instead of just just jealousy. I think well, that's kind of where it started. We had to think at that time is is jealous. He's mad. His brother got killed by this guy who yeah. abandoned him and, and his comrades in battle. Mm-hmm. And then he had to serve two years in a prison. You know, it's, it's hard like, to get. It'd be hard to get over. Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, in Chicago was which is where the prison was. Can you imagine being two years in a prison in Chicago with the freezing freaking cold? Oh my gosh! No, I couldn't. I mean, insane. I couldn't imagine being in prison in Chicago now. <laughs> It'd probably be worse. <laughs> you'd, you'd die definitely. You'd die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm the shot caller. Oh yeah, you're a shot caller, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. uh, yeah, this this has been great. Yeah, this has been a good episode. Uh, this has been a kind of a, a brief history of the Hatfields and McCoys, the American uh, uh, legend and Romeo and Juliet story, and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, thanks everybody for listening. We'll be we're thankful that you have tuned in and uh, let us uh, let us know what you think. Reach out to us and let us know if you like the episodes. We always love to hear feedback. So, let's go and build that creed together. All right, let's do it. 